In this video, we're going to look at the latest snipping tool in Windows 11. You'll remember that the snipping tool allows you to capture screens and parts of screens and do other things with that. And we're going to go over bit by bit what happens. Now I can go to search and search for the snipping tool. And there it is. I happen to have it pinned to the taskbar. So I can go down and hit the snipping tool. Now one of the things in the new snipping tool, you no longer have to hit save. When you create something, it is automatically saved. Where is it saved? It's saved in a folder called screenshots in your pictures folder. I happen to have a shortcut for that. So I'm going to click on the shortcut down in the taskbar so you can see. And there is my folder. You can see my name, pictures, screenshots, and there's a couple I have saved. No longer do you have to go up and hit the save button. That is a great improvement in the snipping tool. Right now I'm going to X out of that. We have new. We can start a new snip. You also see that we can use a keyboard shortcut to start a new snip. We can use the Windows logo key, the shift, and the letter S all together and that will bring up the snipping tool. But before we do any snips, let's take a look at some options up here. Windows mode. That's a drop down menu. We can do a rectangular mode, which means we make a rectangle and it will grab whatever is in there. We can do a window mode. So if we have a particular window open, we can have it just capture that. We can use the full screen mode. And in my case, I have two monitors. If I use that and capture, it will capture both monitors. And finally, we can use the free form mode, which is exactly how it sounds. You simply take your mouse and you just freely take it wherever you want it and it will capture whatever is in there. We'll have a look at that in a little bit. The other option at the top of the snipping tool is no delay, or we can snip in three seconds or five seconds or 10 seconds. This option comes in really handy when you want to capture something like, for instance, let's say I want to capture the start menu. If I have no delay, it will not allow me to bring the start menu up before it captures whatever I've chosen. In that case, what I want to do is I want to use a delay and then I go to the start menu and I bring it up and after the delay, it will capture whatever I've done. We're going to try all of those things so you know how to use the snipping tool. I'm going to start in the rectangular mode and now I'm going to say new. It might be a little difficult to see in the video, but the screen just went dark. Okay, at the top is a menu. There's rectangular mode, there's free form, there's window mode, and there's full screen. The exact same menu, but in a slightly different order than what I just showed you. I'm in the rectangular mode. You can see that my cursor is an X. I want to capture just this little church that's in this window that's on my screen right now. I click on the left button and I drag and you can see that it captured it. And when I let go, there's what I captured of the screen and it's already saved. Let's go in to my folder with the screenshots and there it is. It's already there. I didn't have to save it anymore. All right, now that I have it, there are all kinds of things I can do with it, but just for the moment, I'm going to let this one go and I'm going to start another new one in a different format. I go up here to the drop down menu again, and this time I'm going to say window mode. I have our website here and I'm going to choose windows mode. And I'm going to say new and watch what happens again. It dims. I'm in window mode. 
All I have to do is click on the window and it has saved the entire window. I didn't have to make a square. I didn't have to do a free form. I just clicked on it and it saved everything that was in the window on my screen. All right, let's try a third one. This time I'm going to say full screen mode. I click on full screen mode. I say new. It is automatically captured. And as I told you, I have two monitors. It captured both monitors. Once again, it's saved automatically. And finally, we're going to try the free form mode. I'm going to say new. Now this is very different. But what I can do, instead of doing a rectangle, I can go and I can make a really goofy thing here if I want. And now it saved it. I never use this mode, but there might be occasions where I would. That just gives you an example of how it works. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back and go into rectangular mode and I'm going to capture that church again. So I'm going to say new and I'll begin to show you the different things that you can do. Across the top there's a menu. All you have to do is put your mouse on the icon and it tells you exactly what it is. A ballpoint pen. If I click on that there's a drop down menu there. I can change the color of the ballpoint pen. I can change the size or the width of what I'm going to draw. So I'll leave that. Now I just take my mouse, hold the left button down, and I can draw on it. And that's the pen. The next is a highlighter. Same idea. If I click on that as a drop down, you can see I can pick colors. And then I can also pick the width of what I'm going to highlight. In this case, I'm going to highlight the steeple of the church. The next icon over is an eraser. Suppose I make a mistake. I click on that and I can come down here and I can erase what I did simply by holding down the left button and dragging on it. The next icon over is a ruler. Maybe I want to have something where I want to draw or let's use the pen and I want to put something that is exactly so many inches or so many millimeters. So I can go here. The ruler also becomes sort of a level to keep it in line. The ruler can be turned. If you have a mouse with a wheel, you can simply use that and turn it. Let's set it diagonally. I'll go in here and change colors just for the fun of it. And now I can come down here and draw right along the ruler and you see what it does. Again, I'll go back to a race. I can hit a drop down menu and erase all ink. Now besides the ruler you can also have a protractor and you can use that to do whatever you need to do. Now to get rid of the ruler or the protractor, say how do I get rid of it? If I click this again, I can't get rid of it. All you do is take it and drag it off in any direction and it's gone. The next is touch writing. If you have a touch screen, like I do, you can write by touch. And now I'm going to erase everything, erase all ink. The next icon is to crop the image. I click that and now I can crop it any way I want. And then up here I'm going to click the apply check mark or enter. I can also zoom and I can also get out of cropping by hitting the X. So the crop didn't take place. 
Over here is an undo and a redo. I'll just give you an example here. I'm going to take um, a yellow. I'll just draw on here. Now let's say I go back and I say, all right, I want to erase that. I just left click on it and it's gone. But, oh, wait a minute. I actually want that back. I can go up here and do the undo. Now I look at it and I say, no, I don't want that. I could do the eraser again or I can hit the redo and it's gone. Over in the right hand side we have some icons also. We have a zoom. We can zoom the picture. We do still have a save if we want to save it as something different. We can click on that and now we can put it wherever we want it and we can name it whatever we want so it will not be in the screenshot folder. The next icon is if I want to copy it. I can copy it. I can then paste it somewhere else. Like for instance, if I open Publisher, now I can right click and paste and there's my church. There's my picture. Finally, the last icon is the share icon. And here I can choose who to share it to. Common people that I deal with, may their names may appear. If somebody's nearby, my devices, everyone, I can share it. And then I have choices of how I can share it. I can share it with certain apps, you know, depending what I want to do. If I change sharing to everyone, it will find devices nearby me, either on my network or close. It didn't find anything. I don't have anything turned on to share with. And now I can share with whoever I want. I just pick someone's name. If that isn't the person I want to send it to, I can X out of that. And now I can either search for a contact or I can type them in. I'm going to search with Joyce. I could send to Joyce at 4KCC and I can type her a message and then I can send it. So that's the share button. Finally, you have three dots in the upper right hand corner. See more. I can open a file. I can open the screenshot folder. I can open with something. I can print it. I can send feedback to Microsoft or I can go to settings. When I go to settings, here's what we have. I can allow the print screen key to open the snipping tool. Snipping, I can say automatically copy changes, automatically save screenshots, which I have both of those on. I can say ask to save edited screenshots. I have that off. I just want it to automatically save them. Multiple windows. I could open new screenshots in different windows instead of the same one. I could add a border to each screenshot. My appearance can be light, dark, or use system settings. So I'm going to leave system settings. Over in the right hand side, I could send feedback to Microsoft if I wanted to talk about the snipping tool. Now just for the fun of it, I'm going to turn on the add border to each screenshot so you can see what happens there. Now I'm going to bring the snipping tool up and I'm going to be in rectangular mode. I'm going to say new. This time I'm going to come down here in the corner. And you can see there is a very faint red border around the screenshot. If you want that for some reason, that would be great. I normally have it off and so I'm going to go back in and turn it off. The best thing I can tell you is play with all of these things to try them to see what you can do with the snipping tool. Don't be afraid. Try them. Now I do want to show you one last thing, which is the snipping tool with the delay. I didn't show you anything. I'm going to click delay and I'm going to say five seconds. And I'm going to put it in window mode. I'm going to say new and then I'm going to go down and open the start menu. So the start menu is open. 
It's counting to five seconds. As you can see, it went dim. All I have to do is click on the window because it's Windows mode. There's my window captured with the Start menu up. The delay allows me to bring things open that I wouldn't be able to do if I did not use delay. And now, of course, I could do anything I want. I could crop. Suppose all I really want to show is the Start menu. I can crop all this stuff out. I have it. And if I want, I could save it somewhere else. I could save as. I can put it in Downloads. And I'll say uh, Windows 11 Start Menu. And now it's in my Downloads. And that's how the snipping tool works.